Getting hit with a fraud when you're in charge can be devastating, even when you had absolutely nothing to do with it. What's more, management often feels that someone has to take the hit for what happened, and they terminate or demote the manager who was in charge, figuring that they should have had tighter controls in place to prevent this kind of thing from happening. That's why we put together this quick rundown of fraud protection practices everyone should be using. Make sure you stick around until the end when I discuss the one strategy that few rely on and it's a shame for in at least one of the big frauds that occurred recently it could have saved the day issue number one i call this the issue no one likes to com to confront i've been covering accounts payable issues for almost 25 years now and whenever i mention this one people get uncomfortable sometimes they give me dirty looks but it is a fact of business life so we need to address it and we're going to address it now when it comes to fraud fraud can be both internal and external external that's right it's not always some bad guy out there it's sometimes it is somebody that you know and actually like this is why we make a big deal about internal controls across the board no exception because there is what i call the myth of the long-term trusted employee now most long-term trusted employees are quite honorable and they would never think of doing anything to harm their uh, organization but there's always that one bad apple and in fact surveys from the association of certified fraud examiners have shown year after year that when there is an ongoing fraud uh, committed by an internal person an employee it inevitably is that long-term trusted employee that person you think they would never never do anything um, so uh, I'm going to stop talking about this but I want to conclude this little section of this talk if you will um, with a hashtag uh, from my colleague Kelly Kelly Paxton she came up with this and she says hashtag trust is not an internal control so anytime you hear yourself saying oh that's Joe or that's Jane we don't have to worry about it you're probably right but you don't want to take that chance that you're not okay issue number two this is one that I call the high alert issue um, and if I was doing this talk even a year ago I probably wouldn't have mentioned it but today it is critical okay and that is when you're you know going about your day-to-day -day operations anything that occurs that is different or out of the ordinary especially when it relates to your money um, you need to stop you need to question it and you never you need to verify it and it's the little things um, because criminals um, are quite good at figuring their way around let me give you a very simple example if normally you're the accounts payable manager and you're doing the wire transfers and usually and it's always the controller who brings you the wire transfer and this time you get an email from the CFO with the wire uh, with the wire transfer directly not going um, through the controller um, and it says something like uh, this is a rush we need to hurry up and get it out maybe it is from this the CFO and maybe it is a rush and you need to do, get it out but take a few extra minutes to stop and confirm because I can't tell you how many times this little out of the ordinary that doesn't really seem that much out of the ordinary has been a fraud okay issue number three I call this one yet another variation of this devastating fraud and this had actually happened in the town that I live in um, so it's near and dear to my heart or at least according to the newspaper it is and the manager who was in charge was fired so we all know that we verify all those emails that come in that have a change of bank account request but you need to verify those changes regardless of how that that uh, request comes to you so in this case the uh, hacking actually did not occur in the uh, customers in the town's uh, accounts payable system it have actually happened in the supplies and the accounts receivable um, department or the billing department and what the criminal did is they changed the invoice Invoices. so the invoices had a little statement on it that said uh, you know please send funds to our new bank account and it gave the bank account number and of course people getting this they received the email it was from a legitimate source it was from an invoice that they were expecting and they went ahead and changed the bank account without change without verifying it so even if it seems like it's ironclad this has got to be accurate go ahead and verify it and because in this case it wasn't and you know there was a lot of trouble afterwards. okay 
Um, issue number four, I call this the alert, the alert issue. You want to be alert for new frauds and you want to be alert for them before you come victim. This is kind of a variation in the last tip where, you know, the change of bank account now came on the invoice um, instead of the request coming through email. So keep in mind, criminals are really smart, or at least some of them are, um, and they look for weaknesses and they figure out ways to exploit them. Ways that you and I would never have, have thought so be continually alert and if something looks you know a little odd then you want to question it issue number five i call this putting on your hacking hat hacking hat can you say that fast five times okay annually you want to become an ethical hacker or you want one of your employees to do that um, you want to keep in mind that when it comes to taking advantage um, your employees know where your weaknesses are and when i say your employees i'm including ex-employees and at the end of the day you never really know who is disgruntled who is having financial issues or what weaknesses they may they may exist so once a year put on your hacking hat and see if you can break the system so to speak see if you can uh, figure out a way that you could defraud the organization then of course if you figure it out you want to fix that a great way to do this by the way is if you hire somebody new if you have a new employee um, have them look through it your system and see where they they see the weaknesses are because they are going to look at things with a little different set of eyes than you would look at it and they um, also you know come from a little bit of different background so it's really that's kind of like getting a, a, a consultant for free so don't overlook those new employees let them try and break your system okay the next issue I call the non-discriminatory issue and that is I'm going to make it clear that when it comes to crime everybody is a target even in the corporate world okay there's no exceptions criminals will take advantage of whoever they can uh, some statistics from the Association of Financial Professionals showed that with these new electronic payment frauds 61% of them was were focused on the accounts payable staff okay and depending upon the fraud um, there's different targets and I just want to go through a few of them quickly that we've seen in recent times um, CFOs have had their emails either hacked or impersonated um, and and then uh, uh, an email is sent requesting a rush wire transfer. It's usually sent to somebody in AP or whoever within the organization is doing your wire transfers. CEOs have had their emails hacked and is sending out requests for personnel information um, in, in the most famous case, if you will. I hate to use the word famous in this example, but it is um, notorious that they got the W-9s. This, this problem has become so bad that the IRS issued a warning to all companies saying as a best practice anytime there was an email request from a high-level executive requesting personnel information tax information that that should be verified before that information is said because there have been so many of these uh, phony emails that unfortunately people uh, fell for you know the email came from the CEO or some other high-level executive the employee wanted to look good and so they immediately sent the information unfortunately to the criminal okay your accounts pay Payable department is getting inundated and they continue to get inundated um, with both phony wire transfer requests supposedly from the CEO or the CFO as we've discussed and also from uh, criminals who are impersonating your your true vendors uh, trying to get you to uh, send a payment to one of their bank accounts instead of to the uh, supplier so they have to be verified payroll is been hat um, has been a target uh, with these requests requests for personnel information and then basically any employee for the last few years we have this gift card scam going on where the criminals ask uh, send an email to employ different level employees asking them to uh, go out and buy gift cards and then they the criminals can turn that into that information the information on the cards into cash and either the employee or the company is out the money um, showing just how smart they are one company told me they got hit several times with the, this fraud and they couldn't understand it because they were updating they you know they were doing a good job at updating their employees or so they thought and then they realized what the criminals were doing is anytime they got a new employee who hadn't been there and seen the former alerts they were um, targeting them and of course new employee want to look good and, and, you, and you can figure out the rest so now that organization had to make uh, training about not falling for the skip card scam part of their new employee training okay okay 
Next issue, um, I call this the blabbermouth issue. I say this is the one time it's good to be a blabbermouth within your organization. Normally that's, that's not a compliment, but as soon as you hear of a new fraud, spread the word and spread it quickly. Don't wait for the weekly staff meeting or the monthly staff meeting. It may be too late then. And as I hope I've managed to convey to you, it's important that you spread this word to everybody, not just um, you know the managers or the higher ups okay so as soon as you hear about a fraud even if it's one that you guys fell for don't get hit a second time don't be embarrassed spread the word and i love it when people tell me because then i can be the blabbermouth and spread spread the word okay and then the last issue and this one if only the employee had followed this would have saved his organization 25 million dollars and this is trust your gut okay call well, this trust your gut issue if something feels off take a minute step back look at it ask a few questions make a few few calls um, in this case it was a 25 million dollars it was it was in Hong Kong uh, the employee was instructed via a zoom call that turned out to be a deep fake um, of the CFO uh, to you know send money which ultimately he did but throughout the whole thing he felt something was off he couldn't put his finger on it and eventually when they figured it out uh, they went to the police which is how I know about it because it was it was in the press and unfortunately Unfortunately, the money was gone, but felt something was just not right. So as you can probably tell from our discussion um, about these issues, use of the most current best practices goes a long way to protecting any organization against fraud. But sadly, there are certain best practices that are still ignored. That is, they're ignored until disaster hits. And that does, when I say disaster, I mean there's a fraud that was successful. It's one of the reasons uh, for this channel, because I want to make sure you have all the business intelligence you need to protect yourself and your organization against fraud. Recently, we did a talk on issues everyone ignores till disaster hits, um, and I don't want that to happen to you. So you can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Stay safe.